The Tom Mix Ralston Street Shooters are on the air. And here comes Tom Mix, America's favorite cowboy. A Tony Cowboy. Dreading. Ralston for your breakfast. Start the day off shining bright. Gives you lots of cowboy energy with a flavor that's just right. It's delicious and nutritious. Bite size and ready to eat. Then you get from Tongo and then your mom with his Ralston Cake BB. Comic Ralston Patriotters bring you another episode in the mystery of the Scarlet Scarecrow. Who is the Scarlet Scarecrow? Even more important, has Tom Mix's returning strength enabled him at last to break through the hypnotic spell cast over him by this amazing trickster? The answers to those questions are revealed in a startling and dramatic way. We join Tom, Mike, and the celebrated detective Gramercy Gaunt in the Dobie Jail, where a surprising thing has just happened. As a storm rages outside, Sheriff Mike Shaw, staring down at the small figure of a scarecrow, says... It's just a scarecrow, a thing made of sticks and claw. Tom, don't just stand there with that kind of peculiar grin on your face. What's happened to Peter Ford? What's happening to us, Tom? Oh, what's happening, Tom? I, I'm not sure, Mike, but I think we've been hypnotized. Hypnotized? I say, it, it's got to be that. It can't be anything else. See, but I don't say... Now, oh, wait. Please, Mike, wait. I try to get things straight in my own mind. We... Now, we were talking to Peter Ford here in this cell. Yeah, yeah. Then what happened? What made you hit him? Him? It wasn't him, Tom. He turned into the Scarlet Scarecrow right before my eyes. Now, wait, wait. Gramercy, did you see the same thing? Good heavens, yes, Tom. Didn't you? No. Oh, now, Tom. No, 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 now, listen. It seemed to me that for no reason at all, you started talking a lot of nonsense about Ford turning into a scarecrow. And then you hit him. I couldn't understand why you did it. Don't you see? To me, at that moment, no change took place. But a change did take place to you and Gaunt. But if we both saw it, if Mike and I both saw the same thing, then we must be right, and you must be wrong. No. You were both seeing things as you were told to see them, as you were ordered to see them, as you were compelled to see them under... Yes. Yes, it can't be anything else. Under post-hypnotic influence. Oh, but Tom, you don't... It didn't work with me this time, Mike. Not then it didn't. Don't ask me why. Maybe it's because I'm feeling better, stronger. I don't know, but... But I'm, I must have slipped back into it again. I don't follow, Tom. Well, Gaunt, for a few seconds, things seemed to stop. I can't explain it. It was like coming out of a dream. Then I saw Mike kneeling over the scarecrow, saying that it wasn't alive, that it was a real scarecrow. See? The hypnotic influence overpowered me again for a moment. And, well, never mind all this now. The important thing is to find Peter Ford. Scarlet Scarecrow's got him as well as Mrs. Grant now. He can't be far. Let's see if we can't find him. Oh, now, wait. No sense running off in all directions. Now, let's take a minute and try to figure this thing out. Figure it out? That's a price and sourdough. They ain't no figuring a thing like this out. There just ain't no understanding it. I think I'm beginning to understand it. Tom, by heaven, if you mean that... If you actually mean you know who the scarecrow is and how he does his tricks... Oh, I don't know who he is. Not yet. But I'm beginning to see light. I'm beginning to follow a straight trail that I... Keep following that trail, Mix. In the name of heaven, keep following it. It's the right one. Peter Ford, stand in there in the door. Oh, I'm got him. He's been stabbed. He's badly wounded. Keep following the right one. Oh. What's that he said, Tom? He said I'm on the right trail. Yes, by heaven, I'm beginning to think that I am. Later in Doc Green's office, Mike is with Doc in the small operating room. While in the office itself, Tom uses the doctor's telephone. Yes? Yes, I see. Well, it suddenly struck me that not having seen you in such a long time... I... Yes, I remembered that, too. Yes, well... Yes, well, don't worry about it. I'll handle everything. I'll have to move slowly until I find out what's happened to Mrs. Grant. Your mother, I mean. Yes. Yes. All right, I'll be in touch with you. Goodbye. Oh, I used your phone, Doc. I hope it's all right. Oh, sure, sure, Tom, sure. 
pal. I'm afraid you won't be questioning that Ford fellow for a day or two. He's in kind of a bad way. Will he live? That's the main thing. I figure he will, yes. Good. I don't reckon there's any need to question him, Doc. I'm beginning to make sense out of this scarecrow business. Mike, yeah? it's late. Best thing for us to do right now is to get back to the TM bar and try to get some sleep before tomorrow. Oh, I'll pay you for that telephone call later, Doc. Oh, you kidding, Tom? I reckon I can afford a nickel. Oh, it costs more than a nickel to call London, England, Doc. Huh? London, England? You mean to say you was talking to somebody in London when Doc and me came in here? What in thunderation for it, Just to double check on something, Mike. If you're ready, let's go. And I'll keep you posted on how Ford gets along, Tom. Right, Doc. Now, yeah. boy, say, Mike. Yeah, Doc? Congratulations on Redskin. Uh, Dr. Frisbee tells me he's doing fine. Yeah, yeah, ain't that wonderful, Doc? Yeah, Frisbee said that maybe we could take him out to the GM bar in a day or two and start exercising. Uh, real gentle, like, you know. Yeah, I reckon he can. Well, good night, boys. Yeah, good, good night, Doc. Good night. Yeah, I'm glad that storm has passed over at last. Tom, there's a passing sour, though. I just can't corral my curiosity. Now, can't you give me a little hint as to the answer to the Scarlet Scarecrow? <laughs> no, easy, Tom, easy, Tom. Oh, Mike, you can figure it out for yourself. Yeah. Now, <laughs> remember, the first yeah. time we saw the Scarecrow, we were in Gramercy Gaunt's room at the Dolby Hotel. Yeah, yeah. Come on, come on, sir. Come on boy. Yeah. Now, we heard a commotion outside, and when we looked out the window, we saw a Scarecrow dressed in scarlet clothes dancing crazily down the street. Now, that scarecrow was a real one with a motor inside it to make it move. Well, I sure don't see what... Well, as Sherlock Holmes used to say, Mike, you see, but you don't observe. Now, there's a definite reason why that scarecrow was the only one to have a motor in it. Mm -hmm. And... Hey, Mike, who's that walking along the road ahead there? Huh? Hey, hey, you're right, Tom. There is somebody walking along ahead of us there, and it looks like it might... Tom, if I ain't mistaken, that's young Jeff Mullins. He's got a stick across his shoulder with a bundle onto the end of it. I reckon we better look into this, Mike. Come on, Tony. Yeah, come on, Thunder. Oh, Tony. Oh, Tony. Oh, 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 I said, oh. Uh, good evening, Jeff. Oh, I reckon I ought to say good morning. Oh, oh, hello, Tom. Hello, Mike. Well, where are you bound for this hour of the morning, Jeff? Fourteen-year-old ought to be to home in bed. No, I ain't sleepy, Mike. Besides, I, I got to get to Capital City as soon as I can, and it's a long walk. Yes, it sure is. If you have to go to Capital City, why didn't you let us know at the ranch? We'd have been glad to run you over. Oh, well, you know how it is, Tom. You don't like to bother people. Oh, no bother, Jeff. As a matter of fact, why don't you spend the night at the TM bar, and we'll see that you get to Capital City early in the morning. No, I... Oh, uh, we've got to go to Capital City anyhow, Jeff. Vinegar John's competing in the flower show. Yeah, and he'd be unhappier in the hand of the coyote sociable if and we wasn't there to lend our support. Yeah, you, you better spend the night with us, son. You'll get a good night's sleep and be in Capital City long before you could get there on foot. Well... All right, up you come, boy. Grab a hold of my hand, swing it behind me. All right, up with you. Hey. Uh, I'll give Mike your bundle so she can hold on to me. Oh, Mike? Yeah, yeah. I got it. Come on, let's go. All right, come on. Hey, did, hey, does your mom know you're going to Capital City, Jeff? Well, sure. What do you think? I'm running away? Well, no, that never occurred to me, but since you brought it up, are you? Well, are you? Uh, we're all pretty tired, Mike. I wouldn't ask any more questions just now. Not just now. Uh-huh. <laughs> hey, is he bowling? Is Jeff crying, Tom? Like I said, Mike, don't let's ask any more questions just now. Early the following morning in Tom's office. Oh, come in, Jeff. Well, I said you, you wanted to see me, Tom. I... Oh, say, what are we leaving for Capital City? You said the... Yeah, I know. We'll be leaving in ten minutes or so. Well, I saw Vinegar John and another guy drive off in a car about an hour ago. If they were heading for Capital City, I figured maybe I could have gone with them. Well, I'm hoping you won't be going at all, Jeff. Hey, what kind of ma ha ha you give it... Oh, oh, I keep forgetting I ain't supposed to talk that way no more. What do you mean, Tom? Well, Jeff, after you hit the hay last night, son, I, I headed back for town to have a talk with your mother. Unfortunately, you have no phone, or I could have called. We can't afford no phone. I know that. She didn't know you'd gone. 
We found this note you left. What's it mean, Jack? Well, just what it says. I've been a burden on my ma long enough. I'm leaving home to get a job, make some dough. What about school? What about it? Some things are a lot more important than money, Jeff. Name one. Education. Oh, nuts. What's the good of me learning history when we ain't got enough to eat? What's so important about speaking good English when Mom can't afford a new pair of shoes? Shoes she needs real bad. Well, I'm 14. I I'm old enough to go to work, and that's what I'm going to do. Well, your mother doesn't mind making sacrifices. Well, I mind her making them. I'm going to Capital City. I I'm going to get me a job. And... Well, why Capital City? If you want a job, and I think it's a good idea, why not take a job right here on the TM bar? We could use a... a man like you. Oh, gee, I, I never thought of that. I, I'd like that swell. Only... I don't know much about roping or riding, stuff like that. Oh, you learn quick enough. Is it a deal? Oh, you bet. Good. Now, when Vinegar John gets back this afternoon, he'll assign you a place in the bunkhouse and tell you what to do. Put yourself in his hands and you'll be all right. Time to get started for Capital City. If and where to go in there. Oh, hello, Jeff. Howdy, partner. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Jeff just become one of our ranch hands, Mike. Huh? <laughs> He's going to work for us during the summer, that is. <laughs> That's fine, Jeff. I can't think of nothing better for a growing youngster than to... Excuse me, boys. Yes. Tom McSweeney. Vinegar? Yes. What? Sure, Vinegar. Sure. Toronto. You're right, Mike. It is time we got started. Something wrong, Tom. He said something strange has happened and that Scarlet Scarecrow's been at work again. Shredded. Roll some for your breakfast. Start the day all shining bright. Use your lots of cowboy energy with a flavor that's just right. For better breakfast, it's Ralston. One, two, three. Shredded Ralston, the ready-to-eat bite-sized cereal. Regular Ralston and instant Ralston, the delicious hot cereal. Look for these whole grain cereals in the red and white checkerboard packages. For better breakfast, it's Ralston. One, two, three. Three. Well, Jim Harmon, that is a collector's item. Atomic show that has not been heard in 52 years. Now, you promised you were going to tell everybody the solution to the mystery. Well, I think this is the way it uh, went. Uh, <clears throat> I, uh, the, the solution lay in Tom's phone call to London. He referred to the missing Mrs. Grant as your mother to the man he was talking to. Now, the wounded Peter Ford was her son, perhaps from an earlier marriage, you know, because of the difference in the name. And P Peter was in the next room uh, in the doctor's office. So who was Tom talking to in London? Uh, someone he hadn't seen in, quote, a long time. I believe that person was the real Gramercy Gaunt, the detective, who pronounced the family name a little different from Grant. It's unusual for a fiction writer to have two such similar names in a story unless there's a point to it that he wants to make. Uh -huh. Now, uh, remember, only the first scarecrow figure, which was seen from Gramercy Gaunt's room, was mechanized. It had to be, since Gaunt was present and he could not manipulate it otherwise. Tom, still recovering from his fight with a mountain lion, susceptible to the fake Gaunt's hypnotic suggestions, and not having seen the real Gaunt in, quote, again, a long time, accepted the fake Gaunt. The so-called Gaunt had to kidnap Mrs. Grant, his mother, and try to kill Peter Ford, his brother, or perhaps half-brother, who could see through his impersonation. The so-called detective was trying to work some criminal scheme in Dovey, and he almost fooled even Tom Mix. But Tom, through a life of clean living and generous bowls of hot Ralston, <laughs> recovered 
and saw through everything. He told the fake God to release his prisoner and reach for the sky. Lawbreakers always lose. Straight shooters always win. It pays to shoot straight. Well, Jim, you're absolutely right. That's exactly what I would have said. <laughs> and thank you for bringing uh, uh, the Tomics Lost episode.